uh, Kelly, Kelly, thank you so much for that. Those um, words that are needed to be um, said amongst our UU fellows and um, reflected on. My small portion here this evening is to tell you a little bit about what's in the introduction and how this book is, is organized. Um, I just want to um, reiterate or, or just actually read to us, all of us, a sentence at, at the very end of the preface because I think it is um, so important. And what that, that says is, is, if this is received as nothing more than a document, that will be a travesty and a fresh source of injury to all who participated in offering and compiling the wisdom found here. And I believe that each one of us is here this evening because we fervently affirm that statement and want to do our part to move from reading the document to creating the social structures needed to implement the recommendations and actions, which we're gonna focus more on next week. But this week we're, we're diving into just one of, of the chapters in this book. To me, this book is a work of science, a work of art, a work of love. It is a gift of a blueprint for our congregations and for our denomination to move forward into the liberation from white supremacy baked into our larger culture. So a little bit about the, the introduction. Um, as as uh, Reverend Kelly mentioned in 2017, a really inspired and dedicated group began this daunting task. Can you imagine creating the beginning steps of truth and reconciliation for the problem of racism in our, in our midst? Oh my goodness, it boggles my mind. And yet here in the introduction, our authors, our guides offer us their agreed upon purpose and goals, their principles that guide their work and finally, a cautionary and helpful word about centering. As a white person, I will lift up but one of these six stated goals, which is to collect stories of those who have been targets of harm or aggression because of racism with, within existing UUA culture and identify the aspects of that culture that must be dismantled to transform us into a faith for our times. Me, growing up in Perrysburg, Ohio, um, I had little contact with people of color. And the only black person I ever saw uh, came to clean our house a couple of times. So fortunately, I've had the um, good fortune to expand my circle of friends and coworkers and, and congregants by moving to the Cleveland area on the cusp of being an adult. But in truth, many white people in our state of Ohio have had few if any significant relationships with black and indigenous people of color. So it can be kind of hard to believe that the harm and aggression occurs within our movement, but it does. Working to understand the dynamics of this reality is important to me as a white person. I especially appreciate in this book, the avatars, because stories often bring home needed lessons in a way that an explanation does not. The introduction also reviews the five principles that guided their work. And I encourage you to, to read that um, on your own. Uh, finally, this section contains a word about centering. It is important, in my opinion, to read and reread this uh, comment. I will highlight or paraphrase the content of the last paragraph. Centering white dominance means prioritizing the comfort of white people. And we can understand that a more just and effective system 
would center the comfort growth and agency for those who are currently oppressed. And this would have benefit for us all. And therein lies our liberation. So how is this book organized? There are 11 chapters examining aspects of being you, you, of our coming together with succinct statements of each of the issues and with recommendations and actions and takeaways for each. Just a sampling of these aspects include things like theology, governance, hospitality and inclusion, education for liberation, accountability and resources, and, and so much more. And of course, the one that we are focusing on this evening has to do with living our values in the world. There's even a helpful table at the end of the book with all of the recommendations listed there for reference. Uh, finally, I'll just mention the five avatars that are um, sprinkled throughout that describe real life experiences within our UUA environment, within our UUA world that preserves the anonymity and anonymity and respect of the individuals involved, but are, are truly real experiences. So my hope after delving into this tremendous gift is that we all will find motivation to find a way to share with each of our congregations the contents of this book and make a commitment to begin implementing the recommendations and actions. After reading this amazing labor of love, I feel we can do no less. <laughs>